We are online with Bill Ottman of Minds, the open source social network dedicated to open source culture. And one interesting thing we're talking about is actually investment and how do you support Minds and with the new laws about the Jobs Act from last May, um, apparently people can actually invest equity in, in companies which could help us. We're discussing that and discussing how we're rolling out minds for open source ecology. And just to brief, just to rewind a little bit on a overview for open source ecology. So we want to transition from Facebook to minds. Um, while we still, of course, use Facebook, we're not going to throw out the baby with the bathwater. I mean, we cross post and uh, eventually transition to minds because of all the all the issues of uh, open source you know what you're getting you you don't have snooping people are not selling your information or whatever uh, it's good it's good for the world in general so you don't have the back doors in your essential operations or the fact that i mean on, on facebook right now one issue we get a lot is posts simply disappear you know you have no control over like one one function we do for for facebook actually which works really well as I'm in a workshop, I'm actually taking pictures one by one and uploading them real time to Facebook as comments. And that actually gets you like a decent instructional. And that's something actually I was going to ask you, Bill, if that's also feasible. Like if you just can upload through an app your comments and then you can literally get like uh, video instructionals on on uh, on the stuff that we build. The other thing for yeah, OSC. Yeah, we actually can do that now. I mean, it's uh, I like how you put it sort of balancing the different networks and always trying to migrate to open source ones but like obviously you know we live in a mixed world of yeah. open source and proprietary stuff so um, but they've done a good job at designing products that are functionally really great like Google Facebook all of them all the top networks are great designers uh -huh. <laughs> but the, the, like the nature of the platform is just corrupt yeah, just yeah. By, based on the nature of the code. So, you know, yeah, and it's it's a lot like organic yeah. <laughs> food. I, I think of it like organic food, and it's like what, you know, you, you guys are talking about with just the whole starter kit for, like, each layer of civilization. Right. To convert the whole infrastructure of the world to try Naturally. to transparent. Yeah, the, in, the discussion here is very nice because you're kind of plugging into that... Uh, mainstream world of finance like the new new laws around raising funds that's really exciting and then having the pay various payment mechanisms on mines that can really help and the other thing is i and it's a funny thing i'd like to bring up about any proprietary software i mean literally any proprietary software by definition is malware if you don't know what's underneath it it can be doing things that you do not like whether viruses or snooping or whatever so i mean i i do believe that um open source as companies and everybody gets more efficient and lean and mean or, or just just ethical in the future I think there's a definite like ethical place just on well ethical and performance like when we care about security because security is going to be a huge issue in a future economy you can't have somebody just you know take your money because it's virtual and you have no control over your data like literally if someone takes your data there they can possibly be taking your money I mean, can't really have that. So there's a real case for the privacy that a platform like Minds would offer. Yeah, I mean, using anything, whether it's a hardware, software, a car, like any device or object that we use, like the the nature of and openness of the code is like there and all this stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're driving a car and it has a computer in it, it's self-driving or whatever, even if it's not there, you don't have control over what could potentially happen with that car. So that's going to be an interesting debate too, as with like Tesla and Uber and as everything is getting automated, you know, mm -hmm. are they sharing their code? You know, when you have hundreds of thousands of people on the road, all being controlled by some algorithm, like <laughs> it's important. Everyone's able to make sure that that's not going to cause tons of cars to get hacked at once, you know, but then the devil's advocate is that, you know, it's more open to vulnerability by it being open because everyone can study it more. But at the same time, if it's more open and transparent, it becomes the best and most secure because the most people are working on it. But yeah. 
it's so it's sort of a balance yeah that's uh that's an interesting point and i think that uh i mean i think in general the general pr operating principle is the more transparent something is probably the more rational or more more benign it is um i don't know um we'll see yeah. so i think you could probably find a direct correlation between overall uh Probably the, the most powerful things in the world are open source already. Wikipedia. Yeah. And the, the whole Linux. core of the internet, like all of the protocols and... Uh, you know, That's a good point. Linux, when we... The right. operating system layer, all the best, in which is why everyone uses GNU Linux, is because it's open source. It's by far the most dominant operating system. And then we have browsers like Firefox that are open source and so you know they've occupied that space and like competing with chrome but most people don't realize that like when you open chrome or safari or firefox like you're that is giving them energy yeah so yeah. like every app that we use it is just like buying organic food and i love that link because in, people like buying organic food now like finally people understand why that matters and where you're contributing your money and you know apps are the next stage of that <laughs> yeah local organic apps yeah so tell me sure. okay tell me more um uh regarding the so some of the monetization mechanisms within minds and how people can benefit from that open source ecology and yeah, others so who join just, minds uh, we just added the ability so anyone can monetize their account and that allows you to so we will share revenue with you for um ads that are showing on pages that you choose to monetize no one's forced to use ads and you know you can get rid of ads or not use ads at all if you want. But a lot of big content creators like getting ad revenue. So um, we want to help people do that. And we're also building our own. The Boost system with points is an ad network internal to Minds. So we are trying to get away from third-party ads like AdSense and uh, all that stuff because that spies on people. <laughs> when you see yeah. ads on sites, it's, it's spying on you, but not necessarily in a malicious way. But we do want to get away from those sources of revenue for people and, and make it all um, just through serving boosts. Yeah. This is probably coming off. Uh, it's a little bit complicated. But basically, so you can earn money on mines getting paid for the traffic that you drive to your site, your channel. And that's um, only through only through ad revenue? That's one way. And then the other way is people can subscribe to you monthly um, for a price that you set, and you can provide them exclusive content for that. Oh, that's interesting. So, yeah, it's similar, or, or for different services that you want to provide. So you set, you know, say you want to say $100 a month, or $10 a month, or $1 a month. You create a description of the service or content that you're going to provide. So say you're going to... You could use it from anything from, uh, you know, paying to oh. access your your videos. Your okay. So so hold on a second. Or services like if you wanted to do consulting. Yeah. You say okay for sub subscribing, I will give you this amount of time per month, and people can subscribe to you. Like whatever it is that you do, you can sort of shape it. There's another cool site that does uh, something similar. I mean, all crowdfunding sites uh, are sort of doing this in a way but patreon is a cool site that does uh, yep. subscription to support artists and creators and yeah that whole world so yeah you know the subscription thing is great and then the other one that we have is you can offer other people money in order for them to share your post to their network so it's called a peer-to-peer -peer boost so i could send open source ecology a you know, offer of ten dollars to share my article or my video to your network and your followers, and so it yeah. allows you to sort of share audiences and yeah, and make money that way. So, but we're going to keep stacking on top. We're going to add more like a shopping cart so you can sell stuff that you make, uh, you know, hardware. And does the shopping cart exist right now? No, not yet. That'll okay. probably come later this year. Do you have a, a roadmap that's document written roadmap or 
That's yeah, yeah, I'll shoot it over to you after the call. Okay, we, uh, can we share that with the public, or is that private? No, yeah, it's all out there. Uh, okay, so. excellent. And then um, tell me more about the investment where you're, you're actually you signed up with, uh, according to the Jobs Act of May of 2016. Is that is that correct? According yeah, to that, yeah, so tell me more about cool form, that. Sorry. Go ahead. Go there's ahead. a cool new form of equity crowdfunding where any company can basically open up the structure of their company to the world and people can invest in it and become an owner of that company. And so there's a bunch of sites that are, that are doing this now and we're going to do around opening up the ownership of minds to the world. So, What's the investment... You know, uh, minimum investment in that is there a limit? Like hundred bucks, hundred. Okay, and w what is the mechanism for dividends? Can you select that you don't do dividends until, or what's the me mechanism for paying people back? We actually haven't posted our full uh, press release on this, so I I actually don't even know all the answers to exactly the specifics of it yet. Yeah, it's probably it'll, it's going to go live in in March. Uh, right. But it's the safe agreement, which is, you know, you, based on what you invest, you get those votes. Yeah. Who are you collaborating with uh, to make this happen? Uh, we're using WeFunder, which is uh, a really interesting company that it's like a Kickstarter, but for stock. Mm -hmm. So you're collaborating with them. They're helping you with the agreements and all that, setting that up? Mm -hmm. Tell yeah. me how difficult is it to if, say somebody's got a stock corporation, like w open source ecology is a non-stock corporation, but if somebody has a stock corporation, uh, corporation, otherwise, what's the process and how much effort and cost is involved in setting up uh, that equity ownership structure? Um, you can really realistically get it all done for like 2K. Okay. Because you have to submit a certain kind of financial format to the SEC, okay. which is called GAAP reporting, G-A-A-P, mm -hmm. and so, you know, you need some serious accounting to get that submitted, but then, you know, your last two years of financials are public with the SEC, which is cool transparency as well, um, and that's it, pretty much. And the reporting requirements are, is there like an annual report you got to file, or is it, how? what are the reporting yeah. maintenance yeah, requirements? Yeah, there's, there's certain reporting requirements and then you pay we fund her four percent of the rates uh-huh so they get a four percent cut how do you if somebody invests in it how secure is it that they can get money out can they trade their stock they can sell it and then somebody else buys it or um good question okay and how do people know that uh, like if someone invests are they likely to win on that or lose or both or how it's is it risk just I mean, what's the level that of risk is completely up to you know everyone's own expertise on what they're investing in um, mm -hmm. the way that it works is it converts the next round so you do say the first raise of the company is for I don't know a couple hundred thousand dollars and then you invest and then if they do another round after that you make the amount in which the valuation increased mm -hmm. and what's uh, are you required to pay that out like every round or something or or what's the governance there yeah I think I think that's how it works I mean I, I I'm doing I I'm obviously need to do a lot more yeah. Reading so the question all the exact terms before I do anything. <laughs> yeah, the question that's relevant for a lot of startups is, uh, is that surrounding control of the organization. So one major thing that we do want to find out about this or for anyone else's benefit in the future is can you set up a governance structure where the investors have zero governance in the organization so that the founders and the board of directors can direct that without the financial pressure that can lead many companies to go south. So that's if you can. Uh, I think honestly, I don't see any limitations in what kind of bylaws you can create in your corporate structure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see why there would be a, a reason you can't do that. Yeah. Um, okay. Which is cool about you know starting a company. You can however you want to start a company, for profit, not not for profit, charity, some hybrid, somehow, whichever way. <laughs> You can make things work. Yeah. Um, 
it's right. all words experimenting. So with. Bill, maybe uh, so in this brief interview here, maybe you can summarize where Minds as a platform is right now uh, with respect. I know, we know that there's other social networks that were open source that try to start up. Tell me where you are in a space and um, what you've achieved so far and what your plans are. Right, yeah, I mean... Basically, status there, report on Minds. I consider everybody who's working on open source code and open source products, like, all on the same team. So, you know, there are definitely other open source social networks like Diaspora um, and lots of others. So that's all part of the same movement. In terms of competitors that are proprietary for alternative social networks, there's, like... Um, there's a handful out there like Elo, Gab, um, let's see, Sue just at the company ended because they were making enough money, but they did an interesting revenue share thing with the users. Yeah. Oh, so Sue just folded? Yeah, Sue's down. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Which that, I appreciated that aspect of them, but honestly, it's, it's because they're not open source that they're not alive. Right, right. So we were, we got into Tsu a little bit some time ago, but the other fact mm -hmm. about it was, yeah, it's actually not open source either, so kind of lost interest in that. Mm -hmm. Right. And let's see. But then, honestly, what's happening with the censorship on Facebook, Google, Twitter, and all the privacy crazy violations that they do, I mean, it is, yeah. it's so out of control that it's like offensive, honestly. And these, these executives aren't talking about it as if it's a, a problem. You yeah, know? yeah. So, but people are migrating. I mean, they want free speech. Yeah, I mean, just in general. I mean, I, so I've, I've been getting beefed up on, on marketing and business aspects and studying that. It's, I'm just amazed kind of the, you can say, low ethical horizons that a lot of the people in mainstream enterprise set for themselves, as in simply, uh, some people's goals, like I've been listening to podcasts because I, I love marketing lately, but one thing I noticed definitely in there, a lot of people there are just, okay, so yeah, my milestone is to make X money, where it's not like what you and I talk about, it, our milestone is to have this my, this ethical impact or this purpose, deeply purpose-driven aspect and transformation piece happened to society, so the discussion is just so different. And definitely yeah, it's, so it's missing. Yeah, somehow they try to justify that they're on that mission to, you know, connect the world, make the world a better place, but it's not, they're not walking the walk. In Like, spreading technology and access to the Internet actually is a good thing, you know, I believe that the world is liberated the more people who have access to the internet because there's so much yep. censorship in some countries that people actually have no idea what's going on in reality. Like they're so brainwashed that yeah. I do agree with no matter what, even if it's a surveillance device that is <laughs> recording everything you're saying and tracking you around wherever you're going. You know, there is value in just being able to read the internet and understand the history of this world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Even... it would obviously be better if you could get them and they weren't following you around everywhere. Yeah. So it's like one step at a time. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, how many users do you have right now at, at Mines? Got like half a million. Mm -hmm. And then we've got a, a few million who visit the month, the site every month. Right, and so like you're just from logged out and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you, the revenue model for mines is uh, so one is the equity investment. Um, yeah, and then we're doing so we sell points. So you earn points just for using the app for free. Like when you upload, when you check in, when you receive votes, you're earning those points, and you can exchange the points for one point is one view. So you can take your content. So you have an image you want to share, boost it for 5,000 points, you get 5,000 views on that photo. And interactions and all, all kinds of cool stuff. So that is working well because we just brought the price of points down to a dollar for a thousand. Mm -hmm. And that has caused a huge change in 
people seeing the value of boosting because like when you so Facebook obviously limits your reach if you have 10,000 fans you're only going to reach two to three percent of them organically and then you know depending on the interaction it'll you know uh, make it go higher up in the algorithm but on Facebook they pay you can only pay to boost and to a thousand views on Facebook is like six dollars mm-hmm. so a dollar on mines and the impressions are the same it's just an object coming to your news feed so we're basically five times cheaper than fit and the price is similar on Twitter LinkedIn Google for like you know price per impression mm-hmm. so we we've made it like way cheaper to actually get views on your content or whatever you're trying to promote yeah so that's been going really well and then also this subscription model where people can subscribe to you can subscribe to points monthly too um at a yeah even lower rate yeah but then we are about to do this big all the monetization that i told you about before we take like a few percent of all those transactions that mm-hmm. are happening. Mm-hmm. So of the subscriptions or of the uh, advertising or, you know, and stuff like that. Uh-huh. How does that differ from, so how distributive is that in terms of giving wealth to the users compared to Facebook? I mean, Facebook gives no wealth to the users. Right. So that's the difference. There's actually, only until recently, when they just wrote out Marketplace, so you can sell like Craigslist style stuff on Facebook. Mm-hmm. They finally did that, but they've never done any kind of ad revenue share or peer-to-peer payment services, like so that users can actually accept actual money into their wallet. So you have a wallet on mine. There's no wa- Facebook wallet. I mean, they let you put your money that's already existing through there, but they don't have like there's no currency on Facebook. I mean, mm-hmm. I. And honestly, with all these big companies, I hope they change. You know, it's not like us versus them in the sense that they need to end. You right. know, actually, in many ways, they, I mean, they do contribute to, like, the evolution of technology. And there's so many smart people working at all these companies. And most of the people who work there would probably prefer <laughs> that everything was getting shared more and that it was, you know, changing practices mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. um yeah they, they haven't ruled out any mo- youtube is the only one that does an ad share program so you can make money putting ads on your videos mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you and that is a great thing that i mean there are a lot of people who make a living doing youtube videos yeah yeah that's interesting so it's good that maybe if minds takes off with that concept the others will sh- see a good example or otherwise you're going to gobble them up. <laughs> of course, that's a big mouthful, but yeah, it would good. Because it's Facebook, Google, Twitter, they all do contribute to open source. Yeah. It's not like they do no open source. Like they actually build more base layer tech like Cassandra database system. And Google creates Angular, which Minds uses Angular. Mm-hmm. And we also use Cassandra, actually. So we use two major components that Facebook and Google built. And they released them, Apache, open source license. But their main, the important part, they keep secret. <laughs> Which so is... That is, is causing us to have to reinvent the wheel, essentially. Because they already created this, these great tools. Yeah. When you say that they are keeping the core secret by that, you mean what? Their algorithms? I mean, the software, some of the software they use is open source. All their front end, all their front end and back end code is mostly proprietary. Yeah. So instead of reusing various interface elements and so forth, you got to reinvent it yourself. Yeah. Like Angu- Google builds Angular <clears throat> and then Facebook builds React. Angular and React are two of the most popular JavaScript frameworks in the world. They're both open source. And so 
it's like Google and Facebook are, they know that they have to control that level of the market, which is why they make it open source. And they're already controlling the, cons the consumer, like, uh, web destination layer too, but, like, they know that they need the public engineering support from the open source developers around the world in order to stay relevant and competitive because open source developers, actually all developers now these days, web developers, uh, you know, interesting they point. So don't want to give their energy to a proprietary product because so, it's like uh, their life's work is now hidden. Yeah. So for the viewers, let me rephrase it. So you're saying that because they wanted to leverage the force of the open source community, they made, they based their essential work on platforms that are open source so they could get uh, yep. development, which yeah, is a good they, decision. They based, what, what, all, what a lot of companies do is take open source code to build whatever it is they're doing, their website, their app, and then they don't share the code that they made using all that free stuff. Yeah. So... You know, that's what's beautiful about the copyleft license. The AGPL version 3 and just the GPL in general is... The viral it aspect of that. that you keep sharing. Right, right. Just like we do with CC BY SA, share alike. That, CC BY yeah. SA, yeah. Yeah. Creative Commons is such an incredible movement. Yeah. Love it. Even though it still has the NC clause in some of them, but yes, it's that's beautiful. A, I mean... That's okay. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Um, yeah. So we're going to get on Minds, and we are on Minds already. We're going to make that live in a few few days, I guess, and use that right. for yeah. OSC development. We should go through. So, so basically, let's do for that. anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, I mean, you want to share your. You want to share your. See... Go ahead. Oh, my phone. But um, your website, whatever it is that you're using, you know, you can use WordPress or Squarespace. And people think of, a lot of people think of their Facebook or their Twitter as their website. And, but once people start realizing that this, the code and the platforms that you use for your website is the same as buying organic food, then everyone's going to convert their website to these more conscious platforms. Yeah. It, it's going to spark in the same way. It's just that we need to make the tech equally as visually and functionally yeah. good and we're pretty much there so we're releasing the new app in a few weeks and uh it's it's pretty much there so awesome yeah we're, we're starting one for open source ecology and you know anyone who wants a website out there uh that has a social network behind it uh, let's do it yeah awesome so do you want to go through um do you want to share your screen and actually uh show some stuff or are we just uh quit here for now um i'm, I'm on my phone okay so Okay, um, so we'll stop the recording. Let's, let, let, let's do that in a follow-up, actually. It would be good if you and I could do some uh, legwork and then, and then show it. Because okay. I want to like, feature a bunch of content. And, okay, you know. yeah, let's do it as a follow-up. And right now we're going to get busy um, setting it up. So thanks, Bill.